Okay. So uh, here's where we left off our mix uh, yesterday. And I said I was going to do a part three. Um, there were some things that I said I wanted to work on to get this in a more final mix state. But after listening to it um, yesterday, I realized that I probably am not going to turn this into one of my tracks. Um, there are some things that are flawed with it for my tastes and my style of stuff that I like to publish. It doesn't quite meet the grade. So in that case, and that's going to happen, I mean, and so I'm going to turn this into a, an opportunity here. Um, the lead sounds I'm not married to, and I don't want to waste your time as you watch me go through a ton of different presets and figure out what I want for the lead sounds. The takeaway of this was how to get out of loop lock, and that's exactly what we did. We got out of loop lock, and I did turn it into this track here so i'll play a little bit of it and i'll discuss what i did um, and why i did it so the first thing i did was um i didn't i'm i'm having trouble with the lead i'm not a big fan of those sounds that i grabbed so i tried to this is just this right here is just too much for me and this is too repetitive for me and so i probably go in and I would duplicate this twice, and then I would create a part B here and duplicate it twice. And then I would probably take a, a smidge of part B and close out with it. Same thing here is that I would create a part A and I'd create a part B. And maybe we'll do that in another video. I don't know. Uh, but I want to put this one to bed because there's another track I'm working on that I want to talk about as well. Um... This I would probably create more of a part A, part B as well. I just kind of threw it together quickly to demonstrate how to use MIDI Madness. And for the record, I don't, I'm not sponsored by anybody. Everything that you see me, I purchased and I use because I think it's good. Um, there are a lot of things that I don't use that I have spent way too much money on and just sits and I don't use. So that's going to happen as well. So this is going to happen. You're going to create a track and you're really going to dig a sound like I really dig this sound here. You know, that's just awesome, you know, and I wanted to make a track out of it. And then this came along and, you know, I thought it was great. But these drums are too filtered for me. I'm having trouble controlling the bottom end of that. But here's what I did. So I add some drum flourishes, which I'm not married to. And that's the other thing is that I wanted to create this video to wrap up this project, but I'm not really married to a lot of the stuff that's going on here. It's not working for me. so. Like I said, this is going to be a song starter someday, and I may come back to it someday, but I just wanted to show you what I did do. Coming out of the break here. I added a shaker and a hi-hat as well. I may put it up, you know, just so you watch three videos, you could listen to it yourself. So I'll probably put it up with a disclaimer that says this was a teaching moment. Because I made some of the mistakes that I've made in the past. These loops are not some of the greatest. I broke up the drums just a smidge. I added that shaker and hi-hat down at the bottom to give it a little bit of a... 
swing. All right, you get the idea. So what I did on the drums here is I just added a couple of, I don't know if they're called flams or, you know, I call them breaking up the drums, you know, just a little poopa type thing. You know, I know that's not the official name, poopa, but that's what I call it. So there you go. And then here I did the same thing. I kind of led into it. Um, let's just isolate the drums here. It's just to break up your drums again so your listener doesn't get bored, bored to tears with your continuous robotic beat. And all I did was I just took uh, the main sample and in Reaper, uh, you just press S to slice it. You slice it wherever the cursor is. Uh, and the cursor in this case being this line here. You slice it there, S, S, um, and you just drag it over, you know, and you create some, you can get some happy accidents. You know, this is gonna sound like garbage, but So you just get a double beat, you know, that type of thing. And all these red lines are crossfades. So it fades out of one and fades into another. So that's all I did with this. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to recreate the wheel here and get fancy. You just want to break up the sound so it's not so robotic. That's why we have turnarounds on the bass and we have little flourishes here on the bass. Uh, and that's what I did here. I gave it an extra flourish here. Because it, it turns back around. And what I was saying in the previous video is that I did add a replica on here. But when I first started out, I used to have it cranked up to like 40, 45, you know? And here's what, what happens when you have it cranked up that high. It sounds cool, but trust me, it's gonna muddy up your mix. Cause you start adding 45 on every instrument and it's gonna be ridiculous. And you would think, cause you think back on those songs that you've listened to so many times and you think the echo just goes on for days. You know, do, 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 do. But I was listening to some uh, Pink Floyd, The Wall the other day, and I thought David Gilmore's guitars echoed a lot more than they did. There was much more delay on it. And I was surprised that they clamped it down. So it's like your brain fills in those echoes in your mind, but in reality, the engineer or the mix master of that track tightened up that delay. And when you first tighten up your delays, you're going to think it sounds awful. But trust me, it doesn't. The user fills in the blanks in their mind. So that's what I was saying about be careful with your delay. Too much delay can muddy up your mix and then you're fighting frequencies in the tail end. I also mentioned that I do put an EQ on the master track. I pop the low end. I cut out the hum. This will cut out the mmm, that especially those subs that are very popular now can just ruin a set of speakers. Uh, so I give it a little pop before you hit the rumble, and then I drop out the mid-tones, and I cut off the crispy. And then I put a comp on here, a compressor, I like the Reaper standard um, preset, uh, master bus glue, and I mess with the threshold. And sometimes I change this to a two to one, but on this particular case, because those drums were so filtered, I just left it at a 1.5 to one. And it, it worked just fine. So I have them turned off for now because I wanted you to hear the dynamics. 
But that's pretty much all I did. I tried to find some vocals, and that was part of, I guess, part of my frustration is that I couldn't find a good Vox that was working. I started chopping up some vocals, and it just wasn't working for the track. And then I realized that I have two conflicting themes here. I have a very sweet lead sound with a very driving, almost dark bass line. Whatever. To me, it's not working. I, I like it a little tighter. So anyway, but I wanted to finish up this series of videos on how to get out of loop lock. That was the whole point of this is that you can just with just a little bit of instrumentation, you know, some shakers and hats, a couple of crashes, slicing up your drum beat, a um, couple of lead sounds, you know, and you're good to go. And I created a lot of this with the machine. We don't build airplanes without computers. I don't know why we're not making music without computers. Computer's smarter than I am in some of this stuff. It's going to be tighter and it's going to be faster and it's going to create things that I would have never have thought of. That's why I use the computer, because it creates things and I make it my own. So anyway, hey, if you liked the video, awesome. If you didn't, let me know. Leave a comment. Let's be positive. Um, tell me how I can do better. Um, otherwise, hey, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Okay, take care.